This is HMS Broadsword, a Type 22 frigate. One of the newest class of ships in the Royal Navy, it was the first to be built with only guided weapons as its main armament. Although as a result of experience gained in the Falkland Islands, later versions will also carry a 4.5 gun. It's equipped with both Sea Wolf close-range air defence missiles and the surface exoset medium-range anti-ship missile. It has a crew of over 200. Every officer branch is represented among the 20 officers on board and it'll usually carry up to four junior officers under training as well. Every officer under training will stand watchers on the bridge. Many will eventually get a bridge watchkeeping certificate. But it's the first priority for a seaman officer because once he has it, he will keep watch on the bridge on his own. He's on a course of 185 speed, 5 knots, CPA, 5 cables, bearing at 240, track three four seven. Roger, we call. Captain Sir Swatch. Captain. Sir, at Green 05, range 6 miles, there's a small fishing vessel. On his port bow, sir, his bearing is drawing slowly left, and there's a CPA of 5 cables to port. I'd like to maintain this course, sir, and assess, reassess this CPA at 2 miles. Yes, oh, Any seaman must learn how to navigate so that he always knows where the ship is by day or night. These days, most ships will be fitted with satellite navigation systems that give an immediate printout of position. Nonetheless, every seaman officer must still be an expert with the traditional tools of the trade, the sextant and the chart. Later in his service, he could specialise as a hydrographer and actually make the charts that other seamen use. Going to sea is not just another job, it's a way of life. And it's a way of life which is demanding, exciting and sometimes dangerous. All seamen will specialise as principal warfare officers and here at HMS Dryad during their basic training in a small cubicle attached to one of the most advanced computer controlled simulators in the world, young seamen officers are learning how to fight their ship in battle. Every order they give is fed back into the computer, which is in itself controlled by a team of highly experienced operators representing all facets of a developing battle. Well, summary, so we've got to start doing step sides. Right, okay, just, just bear that in mind. Otherwise, when the report comes in, you'll be caught and um, things will happen much slower than they should. Right, sir. This is Romeo 5, Mike, Roger, Port 175. This uh, is Delta 3 uh, Hotel. Bearing. Stand by. What's the range there? 323. Three, three. Three. Execute. Over. I want to launch oh, the helo and then... Mine. Uh, Mine. Uh, Get uh, three four three four one two. Uh, right. Well, let's let's get it there. Then. Remember, we've got an air attack coming Extra's in. Right. Just engage Action. the missile with her seat up. Okay. Hang Stand on, anyway. We're just going to launch our helo. Okay. Well, that won't affect the missile. He if won't. you don't take these missiles Stand out with your own missile, Roger. you'll never launch anything. Alpha Seven Whiskey. This is Echo Five Tango. Expect missile attack bearing uh, three one zero. This is X-ray Strip Four Romeo. Roger. Starboard one two zero. Track three four zero. Uh, update that reference point, 070. What was the range on that? Uh, P1, we now have five unknown range hostile again. bearing 310, range 60. Have you reminded That's the officer what we can and never a weave on all courses? Uh, no, no, well, no. That's a deal. We'll get torpedo before we get in the vicinity of the... Uh... OK, tell the officer watch to a narrow weave. Face call, sir, sir, sir. The Royal Navy is a blue water navy and its ships are able to operate in every ocean in the world. They'll stay at sea for months on end if necessary, taking on board fuel and supplies while at sea. The Royal Navy leads the world in the techniques it has developed for this. Here, Broadsword is taking on fuel in the extreme conditions of a full gale in the North Atlantic. Few other navies in the world would even attempt to do this in conditions as severe as these. And the officer of the watch responsible for maintaining course, speed and position during the whole manoeuvre is a 20-year-old sub-lieutenant still under training.
It's a very skillful operation, but provided everyone does their job properly and works together as a team, it's all perfectly feasible. And it's done at night, too. Seamen can also train as air crew, either as pilots or observers, but most fleet air arm officers will join on a short-term flying engagement. The helicopter at sea is far more than just a pair of airborne eyes. It's one of the ship's principal weapon systems. It can be used for a whole variety of tasks, including for launching anti-ship missiles and, armed with torpedoes, it's the ship's main anti-submarine weapon. The helicopters that operate from Broadsword are the Lynx, the best deck landing helicopter in service in any Navy today. They have an operational crew of two, a pilot and an observer. There are many opportunities to fly Navy. A bigger helicopter, the Sea King, with an operational crew of four, will operate from a carrier or even from the deck of a specially converted merchant ship. It has a primary anti-submarine role. The current fixed-wing aircraft in use at sea is the Sea Harrier, which operates from the Invincible class aircraft carriers. These are the first ships to be fitted with the Ski Jump, a British development which enables the aircraft to take off with an increased payload. The Sea Harrier is designed primarily for defence against enemy aircraft, but it's also capable of attacking targets both at sea and on land. Of the three different categories of engineers in the Royal Navy, the aeronautical engineer will only be based either on an aircraft carrier at sea or at a naval air station ashore, but every ship will have both marine and weapon engineers on board. The marine engineer is responsible for the ship's hull, propulsion machinery, power generation, and the basic support systems of heat, light, water supply, and refrigeration. These days, the main propulsion unit of a ship will be gas turbine. Two Olympus turbines, which are marine versions of the same engines that power Concorde, and two secondary Tyne turbines. As a result of the sort of decision the marine engineer may take, it could be necessary to change a complete engine. Because turbines are so compact, that's a job which can be done these days in less than 24 hours. It's even been done underway at sea, and that is a very tricky operation. The weapon engineer is responsible for all communication and weapon systems on board. He's an expert both in computers and electronics, and his training is probably the most technically demanding of all. Yes, starboard team, sir. Roots setting free. Five echo uniform, range seven two. Expiry time at minute two four. Action O O. Intentions on completion. My Cobra attack. Uh, Leander closes for ringer attack. Got a fire and a fire when the ship is in action, his place will be in the operations room, where he can monitor every situation that's developing, control weapon availability, and advise the captain. Uh, limitations on turning are uh, not more than port or starboard ten degrees. Captain, we owe. We need to reprogram case. Uh, we've got a corruption in the operational program. After general naval training at sea, all engineer officers will read for a degree, and most will do this at Manadon, the Navy's own college in Plymouth. For the first two years, they'll study very widely indeed, working with subjects as diverse as materials analysis to building a working Stirling engine on a laboratory bench. This could be an alternative power source of the future.
They'll then begin to specialise in one of the three main engineering disciplines and later in their service, if they wish, they may return here to take a master's degree or to prepare for a doctorate. Royal Navy Engineering is very broadly based. It has a far greater variety of engineering expertise than any other organisation in Europe. We want to check all our pressure and temperature gauges. OK, lube all pressure to the journal bearings. That's up to 50 odd. If you adjust on that one, what we're trying to do is get a whisk of steam coming out of those vents. We leave it blowing on that one anyway. One important difference about naval engineers is that they are systems oriented. They will study across several disciplines and understand a system as a whole, not just one aspect of it. Here, young air engineers are having their first introduction to a working aircraft. We're on this sort of intercom system, which uh, for people not familiar with great mics uh, or other live mics is, uh, is fairly disconcerting. You have to be very specific when you're talking technical terms and figures. Many naval engineers at some stage in their service will become involved in a systems design project in association with some part of a defence related industry which actually makes the equipment. Most of the academic staff at Manadon are serving naval officers in the instructor branch. They will have taken their university degrees before they join the Navy and they too will have done their general naval training at sea. Principally, they join the Navy to teach, but their students could range from newly joined ratings to technical officers reading for a master's degree. In HMS Broadsword, the instructor officer is one of the bridge watchkeeping officers. He also takes oceanographic observations of the drift and set of ocean currents, water salinity and temperature variations, studies which are of great importance these days for the accurate performance of underwater weapon systems. He's also responsible for weather forecasting on board and for the helicopter crew. That is a particularly important role. Uh, the freezing level's uh, 1,000 feet, uh, so in fact we won't see any of this cold air behind the cold front. He'll probably be one of the flight deck controllers too, but the principal flight deck controller in Broadsword is one of the supply officers. When not controlling the flight deck, he's accountable for stores and administration. This means that he's responsible for arranging the resupply of everything, from fresh stores for the caterers to a new turbine for the engine room, and urgently if necessary. He's the ship's hotelier, bursar, legal advisor and banker and is sometimes responsible for very large sums of money. He sees me at red to the three zero, sir. He's on a steady bearing. I'd like to order course 30 degrees to start, sir, to open his CPA to port. Yes, please. Thank you, sir. OK. And in fact, that's his draft order. And he's going where? He's also the captain's secretary and as such runs the ship's office and controls all personnel records and pay. Examination in Portsmouth for, for obvious reasons. For obvious reasons. Um, yeah. So we'll just have to wait until uh, the next opportunity. The last officer branch is medical, both doctors and dentists. The doctor in Broadsword, here involved in a damage control exercise, was trained at St Thomas's Hospital in London, which is acknowledged as one of the finest doctors training hospitals in the world. This is his second job in the Navy. His first was with the Royal Marines at the Commando Training Centre in Devon. So he's also a trained commando, which stands him in good stead because he must be ready to operate from a helicopter onto the deck of any ship, anywhere, at any time. He's also working for his bridge watchkeeping certificate. Broadsword will be at sea for well over eight months in any year. In February of this particular year, she was in Florida. A month later, she was exercising with other NATO ships to the north of Norway. And by the end of April, she was heading south to the Antarctic, quite literally at the other end of the world. Three months later, on the return voyage, they'll be stopping off for a week in Barbados. And a few more days in Antigua in the Windward Islands. Later they'll be calling in at Gibraltar too.
There's nothing unusual about Broadsword. She's typical of many other Royal Navy ships and submarines. And always at sea, even in weather conditions like this, everyone on board will be training and exercising. Anti-submarine tactics, countering air attacks, surface engagements and evasion, electronic surveillance and countermeasures. And emergency drills, man overboard, damage control, fire. Fire, fire, fire. Form the fire boundary, smoke boundary, hatch above the galley is shut. Ships of the Royal Navy are often required to help other ships in distress. Every young officer will learn how to fight fire at sea, which, until you do learn how to fight it, is very frightening. At the Royal Navy's firefighting school in Portsmouth, he will be taught not only how to control the fire, but also how to control the firefighting party as well. The lesson he learns here may one day save a ship, or maybe his life and the lives of his sailors. He will learn how to control damage too. Again, this is very important. It's wet and it does have its amusing moments, but the lessons being learned are very real and may one day be vital. Like every other ship, Broadsword carries its own divers and one of the young officers on board will be diver trained. Their main role is to ensure that the outside of the hull and the propellers can be cleared if necessary and that the entire ship's bottom can be searched. Again, they'll be trained in Portsmouth and they could later go on to become specialist clearance divers. After initial training, officers from all branches can volunteer to join submarines. The main submarine training base is at HMS Dolphin in Gosport, just across the harbour from Portsmouth. Here, a volunteer will undergo very intensive specialist training. And once he is trained, he may well then stay in submarines for the rest of his service. Range overall. That down. Winding in 600 yards. Target's course, 198. Up, look at the target. Should be red, 115. Range overall. Flat, nine minutes. True bearing, 048. Range 4,300 yards. What's my distance off track? Past it, he's opening, yes? Yes. Good. TCC, try target speed, 10 knots. Try 10 knots. 10 knots set. I said try 10 knots. Roger. TCC trying 10 knots. Set when the captain tells you to set. TCC trying 10 knots. Captain's already set. Target's course 138. Don't interrupt the setup drill, you horrible officer. Say again. Target's course 138. 138, roger. Target coming straight towards. OK, stand by market attack. Use four torpedoes. One hit required. Good solution. Sea height, seven feet. TCC, time bearing plot, LOP, stand by, target, set up. Should up. be, red 106. Up, check, firing, bearing. Should be, red 12. Bearing, that. Red 30. Fire. 
down. But whatever branch he joins, or whether he serves in submarines, as aircrew, or on board a ship like Broadsword, first and foremost he will be an officer in the Royal Navy. And his way of life will be the way of life of leading and of responsibility at sea.